April 10th was the last time I played. We're on a streak. I don't want to jinx it. Can I make it eight in a row? So I'm at seven straight wins, which is a personal best. Can I make it eight? We'll see today. Hey guys, welcome to Happy Face. Um, these are what I like to call my Charlie cards, and these are my fancy Charlie chips. We like to rack up more of these at the end of every session than we started with. Why Happy Face Hold'em? Well, we have a Happy Face mode right into the side of the hill in the town I live in. This is vlog number 34. Must all good things end. Hey guys, welcome to Happy Face. Yeah, Hacky, Hacky Face Hold'em. What do you think of that? No, it's Happy Face Hold'em. Welcome, guys. Hey, thanks for being back with me. I appreciate it. Uh, what do you think of the new hat? Um, anyways, uh, today is, it's April 14th. Yeah, April 14th. Today is April 14th. And I'm headed down to jump into the 5-5 game at Commerce Casino, which has a $500 cap. To play some No Limit Hold'em poker. And that's what this vlog is all about. So um, this vlog started to log 500 hours of 1-3 uh, and 2-3 No Limit Hold. I'm changing the goal slightly. I want to log 500 hours of 2 5, three, five and 5, five. So anyways, that's uh, the goal now. But before we go any further, Southwest Poker Vloggers, myself, Eric Fish Poker, now Stephen Clark, AKA Think Blue Poker. We have Jeff Stimson and Mr. Wegas. Anyway, Southwest Poker Vloggers group on Facebook. Go check it out. There's a link in the description down below. So uh, go check out the Facebook group, join it. Go look at the event on there and let us know if you're interested in coming or if you can come. And while you're at it, if you're not already a vlog subscriber to this vlog, why not? Uh, it really helps the channel out a ton. Tell your friends, tell your wives, tell your girlfriends. I'm trying to get at least a video a week out right now and I think I'm doing pretty good at doing that. I love the interactions that we have down in the comments, so don't forget to comment below. I really greatly appreciate it. What else do I want to tell you today? I don't think there's anything else. If I think of something, I'll come back. Oh, yeah, by the way. But I've been off the felt since April 10th. Uh, wife and I celebrated our fourth wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary, my love. Uh, my bride is amazing, and she's just awesome. Anyways, so I've been off the felt for a couple days. We celebrated our anniversary. We had a nice dinner out at the most amazing dim sum place. If you haven't ever been there, um, I'm gonna run you there right now. And then after we finish our dinner, we will be on the felt looking at some hands. We're celebrating our fourth wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. All right, guys, jumping right into it. We buy into the 5.5 five for the 500 cap. I'm in the small blind with pocket nines. There's a raise to 25 ahead of me, and I decide to defend my small blind for 25. And as soon as I let go of my chips, the big blind, he announces he's all in with about 500 effective in his stack. Yeah, probably not a situation we want to be in. The cutoff folds. We take one last look, and we lay this to one down. That's the way to start the session in the negative. In the next hand, we're in the small blind, king four of suited. Uh, and again, a position where there's a small raise ahead of us. I don't think I like defending king four in the small blind. Uh, you know, these suited cards got me in trouble in the last vlog. But not bad when you flop king six, seven rainbow. You have top pair with bad kicker. So I'm going to pretty much go into check call mode for the rest of this hand. So the player there in the low jack leads out for 25 uh, maybe 30 and i'm gonna make the call again check call mode here jack of diamonds on the turn really doesn't change anything in this hand his range here definitely he holds um, all the kings aces ace king king queen king jack is definitely a possibility but really shouldn't change a whole lot Again, check call mode is my thought process here. I wish I had a little more backdoor equity with uh, some diamonds on the board, but that doesn't happen. So like a donkey ass, I go ahead and call his $55 bet. So with 205 in, we spike up five of diamonds on the river. Absolutely changes nothing. I guess eight, nine gets there, but 
really doesn't change much. I check. He checks back asking if I had ace nine. I show my king and he turns over king queen. So we're going to lose another pot, go to the negative a little bit and move on to the next hand. I suppose I could have gotten away from that one. But anyways, in the small blind out of position yet again, we look down at pocket sevens. Um, there's three of us in at 15 a piece. Flop comes down nine, four, four. I check my option again, playing in flow and the original razor and the gentleman after him both check as well. The turn is a two of spades, bringing in the front door flush. The obvious flush gets there and the uh, hijack decides to put out a bet of, uh, looks like about 20 bucks. So I think right now there's not a whole lot I can do other than check call mode again. Uh, River ate a hearts, and this time he decides to assemble a bet of about 30, and I could easily have the best hand right now. He could be on ace, king, ace, queen. Um, as soon as I put my call in, he mucks and elects not to show his hand, so we'll take that one. In this one, under the gun, suited Broadway cards, queen, jack. We open the pot to 20, and we get a three bet right there on the button to 55. So... Button three bet range could be pretty wide here. These are suited broadways. Um, I will check the GTO charts, but I'm pretty sure this is a call in most cases, maybe an occasional fold. Um, but this player was pretty splashy, you know, in the last pot. Um, he insta mucked when we called his bet. So I think he uh, definitely could be opening wide, playing a huge range of hands. So flop comes down, deuce four, four. I check again my option playing this hand out of position. And look at he assembles a bet for 90, cuts out that bet, and then thinks about it for a while and cuts his bet back out to 65, and that's what he elects to put in. So that was a little bit strange. Um, so kind of either he's afraid to bet and didn't want to put in too much or has is really strong and wants to get value. What do you think in the comments? Uh, Take a minute, let me know in the comments on the Queen Jack hand how you would play this post flop after facing this bet. Two overs and a backdoor flush draw on a paired board. I don't think he's got a four in his range, but you never know. I lay it down, gonna find a better spot, and we're gonna move on to the next hand. Which we look at. King Queen suited, suited Broadway cards again. This time in the cutoff, we raise it up to 25. And we get two callers. So this one we're actually going to play in position for once. Definitely like being in position. Flop comes down ace, eight, queen. When the action checks to me, um, I decide to C bet this flop. Just kidding. I actually check it. Um, I could continue here hitting middle pair, but balancing my range, I like to check uh, medium. I probably should have bet big there. Anyways, um, turn card comes down deuce of diamonds. The player ahead of me decides to bet so i call it and the river helps us out a lot giving us two pair um, he checks to me jack 10 clearly gets there but i don't know that jack 10 would have been calling uh, would have been betting out on the turn so uh, i place a bet of about 75 dollars hoping to get a call by a weak ace but he elects to fold we'll take this one down and we're still down on the day um, but we take down this pot so here in the cutoff, uh, ace-king in our hand, we raised it up to 25 and had two callers. Flop comes down 9-10 jack. Not a bad flop. Gutter to the queen with two overs. Uh, we're going to check the action all the way around, and the turn comes on nine of hearts. And what do you do here? Paired board, and you have somebody uh, bet into you right here, you see, for $45. The way he cut it out pretty fast was very interesting as well. Um, so I think about it for just a minute and decide to lay this one down, hoping to find a better spot where we actually connect. Okay, moving on to the next one. We're in the small blind with pocket sevens out of position yet again. Um, this was a five-way limp pot, and um, I had checked. So on the flop comes down 10, 8, 6. The uh, cutoff bets out for 15, and I'm going to defend. We have a gut shot straight. Um, and our pocket pair is okay. Uh, we now turn a king of diamonds, so we picked up a little equity in the sense of the flush draw. Not sure a seven high flush would be worth anything in this position, but hey, 55 in, we're heads up. I uh, check my option, he checks back. I show my sevens, and he rolls over jack eight of hearts. He had an eight on the flop. 
Okay, moving on to the next hand. Let's see if we can't make something happen here. In the low jack, we look at ace jack suited. This is good enough to open to 25 with two callers, 75 in. Flop comes 10, queen, six. So we have a gut shot to the king. We have a backdoor flush draw. And the big blind decides he's going to donk lead into me for 55 all in. So backdoor flush, gutter, one over. I think it's, uh, I'm not getting really the right price to call, but I do. I call his, uh, his 55 all in, hoping that we can make something happen of this hand. And, you know, it was just kind of a struggle all night, getting great cards and not making much of anything. Um, oh, we actually had a third player in. So seven of spades on the turn and a seven of hearts on the river. We don't improve, but the action checks all the way through. And the original all in player shows queen eight. So his queen held and we lay this down and move on to yet another hand, hoping to get something going in this one. All right. In the cutoff, we look down at ace king offsuit. So another premium hand. Uh, it was open to 25. We three bet it to 100. Hoping to get a little bit of action um, and connect with the flop. You know, it's, it's hard to keep playing when you don't connect. So we do get one caller and the flop comes down queen king three rainbow. Now, this is an interesting spot, you know, with a caller to a pre-flop three bet to 100 definitely he has to be on big cards and this should connect with his range as good as it connected with mine so i like to size up a little bit to 150 hoping to get some action from uh, a weaker king um, pocket jacks maybe could make a hero call but we get none of that but happy to take this pot down and we don't know what he held in the next one, we're in the cutoff with Ace-10 of Diamonds. We have uh, two Broadway cards. We're happy to play these uh, to a small raise of 20 and three callers. So $80 in. Flop comes down 6-6-4 six, six, Rainbow. Again, we totally whiff the flop and check our option playing this one uh, with one player behind us. So turn comes down the Ace of Clubs. Balancing my range, I like how we've improved here, but check my option and the action checks all the way through. So when the river comes down the eight of spades, it's definitely time to put some money into this pot. We cut out a bet of $60, about three quarters of the pot, going a little bit bigger than we probably would. Uh, hoping a weaker ace calls is really what we're targeting. And I think somebody holding an eight that hit the river uh, could likely call. Uh, maybe even a four could make a hero call because we did check the turn card. So our hand is a little bit under repped. And that's the idea here. Um, I think if somebody held a six or made a straight with five, seven, like we would have heard from them already, but uh, he does make a crying call. We flip over our hand, he mucks, and we are good on this one. You know, I'm putting this after video together, um, this talk with you before I've actually sat down and even looked at the hands I recorded. But in case I didn't record them, uh, a lot of hands like that went like this. 8-6 offsuit in the big blind in a minimum raised pot. I defend because why not? Trying to get something going on a on a day that I was never up. Not once was I even up a dollar. 8-6 offsuit. Flop comes 9-8-6. Not bad. Uh, I check my option from the blind. Middle position-ish. Who was the initial raiser? Who been raised, maybe raised it to 15 pre-flop, uh, makes a pot size bet of, I want to say 45. Um, I check raise, it's a great time to protect my hand from the small blind, check raise to 125, um, maybe 145. It was a significant raise, it had to be bigger than 125. Hopefully I got it on film here. Uh, but anyways, hand needs protection at this point, bottom two two hearts on the board. He hems and haws, puts in calling chips. The turn, 10 of hearts. Okay, so four liner to the straight, uh, three to the flush. I check it. Lo and behold, he checks back. Okay, he's not on the flush draw. He would have absolutely bet if he had the flush. River comes down, 10 of spades, pairs the board. So now I have a four liner to the straight, three to the flush, and a paired board with bottom two. 
What am I gonna do? I check. He rolls over pocket jacks. Had him beat the whole way until the pair of tens gave him a bigger two pair. Had one exactly like it, but the um, I flopped top and bottom. Uh, made a big bet. Somebody called me. They had an over pair of jacks. Um, two overs came and paired the board like queen queen or something, giving him queens and jacks when I had like ten and seven. Um, yeah, so shit like that was the board was running out for me. Um, oh, and the last big hand, which I know I didn't get on on film, um, I had ten jack offsuit on the button. Uh, under the gun raised, flop came down, uh, king, jack, ten, giving me bottom two. Uh, other player hemmed and hawed for a while. I'm sorry, I checked my option. Again, I defended. I think this one I defended on the, in the blind also. So I checked my option, initial raiser. Uh, made somewhat of a small bet. I did put him on ace, king, though. Um, just... I'd seen him play a couple hands and uh, or king queen right so definitely a top pair with a draw um, so then I go all in over the top of him uh, not a whole lot more I was pretty short at this point um, and he did have ace king and he hits his four hour with the queen to make the wheel or to make Broadway so he makes Broadway four hour on the queen you know that how it all there was a, a pro sitting next to me and uh, him and I had been talking and you know we talked about the hand a little bit and you know I think it was a good call on my part and it was a good jam you know it was a good call pre-flop I, I don't think there was anything wrong with the play um, so the only bad play I think I made last night was my ace jack suited hand when I had one over in a backdoor flush draw and I called somebody's all in I mean I was basically lighting money on fire hoping to get lucky in that hand. Uh, aside from that hand, I think I played everything else uh, about as right as I could. Um, you know, the hand I just talked about where the tens paired on the runner runner, you know, I could have jammed turn when the flush hit, uh, but you know, there's something about live reads at the table. I had to put my opponent on that flush draw. Uh, you know, a big flush draw too, uh, you know, ace king, Ace King, King Queen, um, Ace Jack type flush draw, King Jack maybe even um, because of his opening, where you know where, where what his position was in his open, and sure he could have had all the overs, Aces, Kings, Queens, and Jacks, which he had, you know, Jacks. So um, yeah, you know maybe I just need to have bigger balls on the turn and get the money in. Yeah, I think that's the solution. Uh, in for 700, well, in for 500, topped off an additional 200, added on at one point, and out for zero. So here's the hourly and uh, you know big blind breakdown, how it works out. So it was just one of those nights where uh, I defended a lot of suited Broadway cards from the blinds, I felt like and just never connected to the flop, ever. Um, raise, ace, king, little cards on the flop. Uh, pocket pairs, I think nines were the highest pocket pair I saw. Uh, just didn't, didn't connect with anything. And, you know, one bad call, it was really just a tilted call. Um, I had ace, jack, suited. Uh, flop came down queen high, so with, uh, it came queen high with one heart, which was my suited cards. Uh, so with uh, backdoor flush and one over, somebody went all in for, I think, $55. It was about a pot size bet, so I wasn't getting the right odds to call. But I called, and, of course, it just didn't pan out for me. So, hey, you know, it's uh, I've said it before. Uh, amongst my poker vlogger buddies in our text group, it's become our happy face Holden's famous quote. If you can't take the losses with the wins, then maybe this game isn't for you.